and welcome. In this video, we will look at buying a call option for speculation. For this example, I'm using SOV, the silver ETF. At the time of making this video, SOV is $19.42 a share. Let's say that a trader is bullish on silver short term, so he wants to trade a thousand shares of SLV. Instead of buying a thousand shares of SLV, the trader buys 10 February SLV call options that expire in about six weeks. A call option locks in a preset buy price for an asset. By buying call options on SLV, the trader is locking in a preset buy price. If the price of SLV should rise above the locked in buy price, the trader can use his option to buy SLV at the price he locked in, sell it for the current higher price, and make the difference in profit. Let's look at the 1950 February call option contract. The 1950 strike cost 62 cents up front. This contract locks in a preset buy price of 1950 for SLV over the next six weeks. SLV is currently 1942, so this option is out of the money. In other words, it has no intrinsic value. The value comes only from the fact that the price of SLV moves, in other words, the volatility, and that there is time for SLV to possibly move to above 1950. If the price of SLV moves above 1950, this option begins to have intrinsic value. However, if the trader chooses to buy this contract, for the trade to be profitable, the price of SLV has to move to 2012 or above to cover the cost of buying the option contract. Let's say that the price of SLV climbs to 2012 or above. The trader uses his options to buy SLV at 1950. He then sells it for the current price of 2012 or above. He paid 1950 for SLV and he pays 62 cents up front to buy the options, so his total cost is 2012 a share. If he sells SLV above 2012, the difference is his profit. For instance, let's say that SLV climbs to $21. The trader uses his options to buy SLV at 1950 and immediately sells it for $21. Therefore, he made $1.50 a share. However, his upfront cost was 62 cents a share, so his net profit is $1.50 minus 62 cents, for a net profit of 88 cents. It is important to note here that in most cases, the trader would not use this option to actually purchase and sell SLV. In most cases, the trader would simply resell the option for a profit instead. If the price of SLV climbs above 2012 within the next seven weeks, the trader makes a profit. If the price of SLV climbs above 1950, but not up to 2012, the trader loses money. The price of SLV is above the 1950 strike price, so the trader does sell his option, but the price he gets for selling it is less than the original 62 cents he paid up front. If the price of SLV stays below 1950, the option expires unused, and the trader loses the 62 cents he paid up front to buy the calls. So let's recap. The price of SLV is 1942, and the trader feels the price of SLV will rise within the next few weeks. Therefore, he buys 10 SLV call options that expire in six weeks. The options lock in the right to buy SLV for 1950. This means that for the trade to be profitable, within the next six weeks, the price of SLV needs to climb not just above the strike price, but far enough above the strike price that the difference the trader makes in profit is enough to cover the original upfront cost to buy the option contracts. The 1950 call was not the trader's only choice. In the next video, we will look at other strike prices that expire the same month, with emphasis on the difference in upfront costs, in other words, the amount the trader must risk, versus how much SLV needs to increase for the trade to be profitable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome. In this video, we continue looking at trading call options. In the last video, we looked at an example of a trader buying a 1950 call option on SLV, the silver ETF. The 1950 strike was not the trader's only choice for contracts to buy. Let's compare the 1950 strike to three other strikes that expire the same month. The 1850 strike locks in a buy price of $18.50 a share. If the price of SLV stays above 1850, the trader can use his option to buy SLV for 1850, sell it for the current price, and keep the difference. 
This option locks in the right to buy SOV for 1850 and the cost for this option is $1.20 per share. Therefore, for the trade to be profitable, the price of SOV has to be not just above the 1850 strike price, but above 1970 to cover the $1.20 cost of the option. SOV is currently at $19.42 a share, so for this trade to be profitable, SOV needs to climb more than 28 cents before the option expires. The 1850 strike is locking in a preset buy price of 1850, while the current price of SOV is 1942. This option locks in the right to buy SOV 92 cents lower than the current price, meaning that this option is in the money. In other words, it has 92 cents worth of intrinsic value. The $19 strike costs 88 cents up front. This option locks in a preset buy price of $19 per share for an upfront cost of $0.88 cents a share, so the break-even point is $19.88. The $19 strike also locks in a buy price that is below the current price of SOV, so this option is also in the money, but not as deep in the money as the 1850 strike. In other words, the $19 strike has some intrinsic value, but the 1850 strike has more intrinsic value than the $19 strike. So comparing the two choices, the 1850 strike costs more up front than the $19 strike, but it also locks in a preset buy price that is 50 cents a share lower. The $19 strike costs less, but SLV has to move farther for the $19 strike to be profitable than it has to move for the 1850 strike to be profitable. The 1950 strike locks in a preset buy price of $19.50 a share for a cost of 62 cents a share up front. Because the 1950 strike locks in a preset buy price that is above the current price of SLV, this option is out of the money. In other words, it has no intrinsic value. The value of this option comes only from the fact that the price of SLV moves around, in other words, the volatility, and the fact that there is time left for SLV to possibly move above 1950. A preset buy price of 1950 with an upfront cost of 62 cents means that for the trade to be profitable, the price of SLV must rise above 2012 before the option expires. The $20 strike locks in a preset buy price of $20 for an upfront cost of 43 cents a share. This option is further out of the money than the 1950 option. In other words, for this option to have intrinsic value, the price of SLV has to move 50 cents more than it does for the 1950 option to have intrinsic value. A preset buy price of $20 with an upfront cost of $0.43 cents means that SLV must climb to above $20.43 for the trade to be profitable. Looking at all four strikes, the 1850 strike has the highest upfront cost at $1.20 per share, yet the price of SLV only needs to move $0.28 cents from its current price for this trade to be profitable. The $19 strike costs less than the 1850 strike, 88 cents for the $19 strike versus $1.20 for the 1850 strike. But SLV must move more for the trade to be profitable. The 1950 strike costs even less than the 19 or 1850 strike, but SLV has to move even more for the trade to be profitable. And the $20 strike costs the least, but SLV must move the most for the trade to be profitable. The cost of each option has two parts, the intrinsic value and the non-intrinsic value. When selecting an option to purchase or sell, it is important to consider both parts separately. At the time of making this video, SLV is currently 1942 a share. Let's say the price of SLV did not move. Each day, as the options get closer to expiring, the intrinsic value of the options remain fixed, while the non-intrinsic part of the option loses value each day from time decay. As the contracts move to expiration, the non-intrinsic value of the option moves to zero and the total value of the option becomes only the intrinsic value. Let's say the price of SOV remains at $19.42 and the options are about to expire. The 1850 and $19 strikes still lock in the right to buy SOV for less than the current price, so they have some value. There is no more time left for the price of SOV to move, so the value becomes only the intrinsic value which is the difference between the locked in buy price, in other words the strike price, and the current price of SOV of $19.42 a share. Therefore the 1850 strike has 92 cents of value and the $19 strike has 42 cents of value. However, the 1950 and $20 strikes are above the current price, 
So these options have become worthless as there is no time left for the price of SLV to climb above 1950 or 20 dollars. So that's looking at four different strike prices that expire the same month. There is much to consider when choosing which option to purchase or sell, so we will continue in the next video by taking our first look at how options are priced. See you then. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will take our first look at how options are priced. The pricing of options is based on the probability of outcome, in other words, the odds. Because one can be an option buyer, or an option seller, also called an option writer, options are necessarily priced on probability, or it would be possible for a trader to engage in riskless arbitrage. In other words, if options were not priced on probability of outcome, it would be possible for a trader to place offsetting trades and make a profit without any risk of losing money that exceeds the profit one could make from a risk-free investment, such as a bank account or a government bond. Options are priced by making some general assumptions about the markets and then using some basic tools from statistics to determine the probability or odds of whether the option will or will not be profitable, and if the option is profitable, a probability distribution of how profitable the option will be. There are only five inputs to the price of an option, or six if the stock pays a dividend. The first input is the current price of the stock. The second input is the strike price, which is the preset buy or sell price that you are locking in. The third input for pricing an option is the amount of time left until the option expires. It should make sense that if there is more time left until the option expires, then there is more time for the price of the stock to possibly move to where the option is profitable. The fourth input is the current risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is the rate one can get on a risk-free investment, such as a U.S. government bond. Because money can be invested risk-free into a bank account or a government bond, the interest that one would earn in a risk-free investment is considered the time value of money. If one places money into an investment that contains risk, such as buying a stock or an option, then one has to consider the money that they would have earned in a risk-free investment during that time. An option strike price is the future value of the strike price when the option expires. That value must be discounted to the present value using the time value of money. In other words, the interest that one could earn in a risk-free investment between the time the option is purchased and the time the option expires is subtracted off of the strike price. This discounts the strike price to the present value. The most common used rate for the risk-free rate is the U.S. 10-year Treasury rate. For more on the time value of money, please watch my two-part series on the time value of money. The last part of option pricing is the volatility of the periodic daily returns. This is the rate of change or percent that the stock increases and decreases each day, not the change in dollar amount. It should make sense that the higher the volatility, in other words, the more that price goes up and down each day, the higher likelihood that the price of the stock will move in favor of the option holder. Volatility is the largest factor in determining option pricing. In the next video, we will take a closer look at volatility. See you then.